Welcome to the first edition of the Buff Zone Show for the 2009 football season. I'm Kyle Ringo. This is Neil Welk. We cover the Colorado football team for the Daily Camera newspaper. Neil, the last time we sat here, Josh Smith was still the most dynamic player on the CU offense. A lot has changed since the spring game. What are your expectations for this Sunday when Colorado State visits Folsom Field? First of all, Josh who? <laughs> see, was he that guy that returned kicks and stuff once in a while? I, I have vague I think memories him. of him. I think I have vague memories of him. My expectations when uh, the season opens on Sunday, I think Colorado is going to be a good football team this year. I think this is going to be a, a big step forward for Dan Hawkins' team, for the program, uh, for the athletic department in general. But I think this team has the potential to be a good football team, not a great football team by any stretch of the imagination. But I think they have a chance to run the ball. I think they have the chance to move the ball in the air when necessary. And I think their defense, which nobody is talking about right now, but I think their defense is going to turn out to be one of the very big pluses of this football team. You know, you're already on record. You wrote a column about it. You said the Buffs will go 8-4. and four. You said they'll play in a bowl game. You said they'll beat CSU. So... The one thing you didn't really address in there is who do you think is going to be the, the uh, starting quarterback? I know you wrote another column earlier saying Tyler Hansen ought to be because he has a bigger upside, but who do you think coaches will turn to on Sunday? What, what I said was is, is if I were the head coach, along with having to take that massive pay cut because everybody knows how much I get paid at the Daily Camera. That's true. Uh, but if I were the head coach... I, mean, I guess that means you're buying dinner later. <laughs> That's right. All right. That's awesome. Right. If I, if I were the head coach, I'd go with Tyler Hansen just because of his upside, because of the things he brings to the table. And I think I'm looking at the next two or three years. If you get t through this season with Tyler Hansen as your starter, you've got two more years of this kid to only to get better. With Cody Hawkins, you've got one year and that's it. You've got one more year after this year. I think Tyler brings a lot to the table. But as for who starts on Sunday night, I have no idea. There have been a variety of issues with both quarterbacks in fall camp. Uh, Dan Hawkins has not liked to talk about either one, but Tyler Hansen has missed some practices because of illness. Uh, we hear that Cody Hawkins has, has missed some time because of a variety of things. So I don't know who the starting quarterback is going to be, but I like what you wrote the other day. No matter what happens, the other one is going to have a role in how this team plays. This is not going to be one starting quarterback taking you know, 95% of the snaps. I think the other guy is going to have a role in there, and, and I think that's what uh, Keysaw and Hawkins are cooking up. Yeah, you know, the other day I heard that, uh, and you heard the same thing, that Cody Hawkins didn't participate in the third scrimmage. And I talked to Cody today, and I found out that there was some sort of bizarre uh but but you know fairly quick momentary health issue that he was dealing with that, that led to that and so uh I, I had written that that i thought tyler hansen would be the starter based on that now i'm not so sure and and now i'm sort of going back to what i had been thinking all along <laughs> of cody. cody hawkins and and cody hawkins in my mind still makes the most sense but I still do believe that both of those guys are going to be used and going to be needed at some point this season. Yeah, I can see, I can see some specific packages designed for Tyler Hansen. I can honestly see them saying, okay, we're going to cross up defenses. We're going to make defenses, number one, be ready for him, and then, and then bring him in and do some different stuff with him. But I, I honest, also don't think it's going to come down to the quarterback on this team. I honestly think that the success of this team offensively will depend on how they run the ball. All right, so let's throw, I mean, you and I both said eight and four. We both believe that this team is capable of that, maybe seven and five, somewhere in there, but a winning season, a bowl game. So let's throw all that out the window, and let's imagine for a minute that things go drastically wrong, and this team is once again locked out of the postseason at the end of the year. What should happen with Dan Hawkins if, if that nothing, happens? Nothing. I don't think, I, 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 I watch too many programs that have pulled the trigger too early over the last, you know, eight or ten years. This is not Oklahoma. This is not Texas. This is not a program, an athletic department with everything in place. All it needs is the perfect coach to start it up again. I mean, if you look at Oklahoma when they lost Gary Gibbs, then they had Howard Schnellenberger, then they had John Blake before they finally got Bob Stoops to turn it around. This is a program where I think you have to have some kind of continuity. I think you have to give Dan Hawkins his fifth year no matter what. And when I say that, I look at Texas A&M, I look at Notre Dame. They made changes perhaps a little too quickly. I look at uh, Kansas and I look at Missouri and I say, those people didn't make changes and it paid off. And I think this program is much closer to Kansas and Missouri than it is to Oklahoma or Southern Cal. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, now, 
you mentioned you think the defense is, is going to be a, a surprise. We've heard an awful lot about the running game this summer and, and this mm-hmm. spring. What are your impressions uh, of that? I mean, the offensive line, you know, is back and healthy. There's a lot of big guys in there, and you got four talented tailbacks. Do you expect the, the running game is going to carry this team? I think it will. I think it should. I mean, and I, and I don't know if it will or not. I know if it were up to the offensive line coach, if you, you know, if you asked Denver Johnson what he wanted to do, he'd run that ball every play and throw it only when it was third and 19. But uh, I don't think they're going to go that far. But I do think they have the offensive line and they have the firepower in the backfield, plus a great variety of running backs back there, different guys that I think they can run the football and control the tempo of games against most of their opponents. You know, we made a big deal about uh, who's going to start a quarterback. Wouldn't really surprise me if uh, they threw a little wrinkle in there on Sunday night and Brian Lockridge went out there and uh, took the first snap, you know, in some sort of... A little wildcat formation. Yeah, a little wildcat thing with, uh, you know, Speedy or Demetrius or Daryl or somebody, you know, uh, in, in tandem there with him. Or maybe two of those guys standing there next to him and he's in, you know, he's in the shotgun, takes a snap and and runs or throws or something like that happens I, I would that that would be Dan Hawkins football to me yeah I think I think that there's some things that they've been cooking up the reason that we haven't been able to watch scrimmages and things like that I think they have you know they've been working with this offense I don't think it's going to be uh, you know all kinds of gimmicks but I think it's going to be a little bit different and I think they know they have great running backs and so they're going to lean on that as, as their strength at least offensively defensively I still think they're going to be really good all right, so last year, the Buffs in Invesco Field, a neutral site, uh, you know, won pretty handily with a pretty uh, young, inexperienced team. They did have a returning uh, quarterback. Colorado State had a lot more experience on its roster last year, and like I said before, it wasn't a neutral site. What are you expecting this year? I mean, do I, the I Buffs, think, you know, is a similar result? I think it's a similar result. I, th- I think, you know, after watching Colorado State scrimmage once, I, I had the opportunity to go see them. They don't have a lot of great players. They don't, they don't have the difference makers on that team. I think Steve Fairchild will recruit those players, but right now they're not present in that junior-senior classes that he has up there. So I think this is a game where Colorado State comes out plays as well as it can the first half. Uh, it's their Super Bowl. It's, their, it's, it's one of their biggest games of the season right now. They keep it close for a while, but I think Colorado's talent overall, top to bottom, one end of the line to the other, is much better than Colorado State's. And I think in the end, Colorado you know, uh, dominates this game and wins by two touchdowns. So give us, give us a score. I'm going to say it's going to be something like 38-17. to 17. That's more than two touchdowns. Uh, you and I are thinking about this game very similarly. I, I just think uh, all the all the dominoes are set up here for Colorado. I mean, you got the experience at quarterback coming back, regardless of who that player is. I mean, Tyler Tyler Hansen got enough experience last year that that they win that battle. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, when you're looking at Grant Stucker, who really hasn't played at all, and Tyler Hansen played quite a bit at the end of last season. I think Colorado gets the Gets the advantage there if Tyler is the starter. If Cody is the starter, then, you know, it's, it's even it's tenfold. Even <laughs> right. Uh, I, I totally agree with you about the defense. I, I wrote earlier this week that I, I expect the turnover problem with this team to, to turn around this year. They've been, you know, on the minus side of the turnover ratio the past couple of years, and that's an important thing uh, for any football team, for, for winning teams. Winning teams win the turnover battle throughout the course of the season. I think the defense is going to do that this year, and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this to to see this team have you know a, a plus ten maybe double mm-hmm. digits in, in in the positive side of the turnover battle, and uh, I think Eric Goodman is going to bounce back this year. Found out today that Jamison Davis, who was his backup last year, has given up football because of his knee injuries. So. Uh, that to me puts a little bit more pressure on Eric to have a good season. I think that's going to happen, and I'll say the Buffs win 37 to 13. See, this is what's good. Right, we're sending a message to the nation. Kyle and I never agree on anything, but right now, bipartisan. Okay, working across the aisle doing this stuff. Bipartisan. This is this is what's happening. So here. who's the Republican in this group? Well, I well, I think we all know <laughs> who voted, who didn't vote for Barack Obama. That would be oh me. Anyway, <laughs> bipartisan support, this is what we need. This is what America needs.
and it'll be it'll be different before the season's over. Don't worry. Well, okay. Okay. So, so tune in next week. Uh, we'll have a real quick turnaround. So, so is it really bipartisan if you're promising to fight with me later? Oh, well, of course it is. Right. <laughs> of course it is. Next week we'll talk about the Rockets. Toledo. Toledo. Live from Toledo. It's Kyle Ringo. Going back to Ohio for a couple bucks. Yeah. <laughs>